Welcome to my review of Mission Impossible Fallout. There is no other authentic experience like Mission Impossible Fallout and I would go as far as saying that this is the best action film ever made. Why? Not only because the action sequences are just bloody epic but because they happen organically with the story. Everything feels like a natural progression. I'd say Ghost Protocol it introduced a spectacle of authentic stunts, i.e. the hotel scene, the hotel scene, but in Rogue Nation that certainly raised the bar, uh, but you could almost say that those scenes were crowbarred in, you know, i.e. what was the reason behind the plane scene where Tom Cruise is riding outside a plane. It's amazing. It's incredible. You're like, ah, but what has that got to do with the story? Is there a natural progression there? So in Fallout, we have these authentic stunts at just the highest level of spectacle, but they go along with the story and it's such epic visual storytelling. But where do we go from here? There are about three set pieces, maybe four, in this movie that could have easily been used as the climatic piece. They're that amazing. They could have been the end piece that just blow you away, but they're there all in one movie. It's absolutely incredible. You know, we go from a halo jump to motorcycle chases to running chases. And I must say the running chase is the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen. <laughs> we've got a bathroom brawl. We've got a helicopter chase. We've got a cliff scene. <sighs> I mean, all that is left for Tom Cruise to do is a real free fall from space. And I really want to put it past him. Something else that I really loved about this film is it does throwbacks to a lot of the first films, so especially Mission Impossible 1 and Mission Impossible 2. There's a lot of throwbacks in there, but you wouldn't go, oh, they're just using the same old thing. There, it's new and it's fresh, but it has that hint for the fans of you going, oh yeah, that takes me back to MI2. I loved it. In Rogue Nation, it felt like they had filled it with action and then towards the end they'd gone, oh, we've not done enough espionage stuff. So at the end they did this massive spy dump at the end and it just didn't, it kind of ruined the pacing almost, but it's still a fantastic movie. Whereas in Fallout, the mix of espionage and action just blends together so well. You don't feel at any point that there's been a moment of, mm, maybe we should write this in there. It just all is so natural, so organic, and it's just a really nice mix. Tom Cruise is the definition of dedication. Like, no one is doing it like him. And I think a lot of actors, especially action stars, really need to learn from him. It just, it's breathtaking, but at the same time, it's like, oh, something bad is really gonna happen to Tom Cruise one day. You know, this man is pretty much putting himself in danger for the sake of entertainment, which is mind-blowing and it is fascinating, but at the same time it is scary, but I suppose that is what makes watching it so fascinating and so incredibly tense, because you know that it is all real. But he is also a wonderful actor. The Tom Cruise fan in me just gleamed when he went full Jerry Maguire. There was a moment in this film where I was like, oh my god, I miss that side of Tom Cruise when he would go into full Jerry Maguire mode. And this instalment is pretty emotional when it comes to the interactions between the characters. And seeing as we know these characters from the previous instalments, you know, we have Simon Pegg in there, Rebecca Ferguson has come back, Ving Rhames obviously has been in every single one. We have an investment in these characters and I think the fact that we do have this bigger investment and we've got this history with these characters, it does really take you on board and suck you into the story and really give you emotions as a viewer, you know, and that is also on top of this, the wonderful storytelling in this film. 
And then the action that just blows you away. So it is a roller coaster ride. New to the film is Henry Cavill featuring his arm guns. <laughs> He's just never gonna live that down. You know, just imagine being, you know, getting all the way through your career and you get to like Kirk Douglas age and your most iconic moment is arm guns. <laughs> The poor bloke, like on press, has just had it <laughs> with his arm guns. Every single person's like, please show me the arm guns. Uh, so yeah, but I mean, great thing to do in the moment, just to remove your suit away from your arms, but it just looks so epic. And he is a great actor, you know? And I think what is so great about the fact that he's in this film is he is like a mini Tom Cruise, you know, he's a good actor and he's great when it comes to action. And it's the fact that he is willing to do anything for the audience. No, the, I mean, he's not, he's not Tom Cruise level where he's like risking his life doing <laughs> halo jumps, but he has the wonderful um, dedication as well in the sense of, yeah, I'll do it, you know, let me learn and let me do new experiences. And you can see that. And I think that's what's so wonderful is the fact that you can see the two thrive off each other. And as an audience member, I absolutely eat that up. I could also eat Rebecca Ferguson up, to be honest. Like, <laughs> this woman's amazing. I am absolutely in love with her. Not only is she beautiful, she's intelligent. You know, you just have to watch her acting in The White Queen and you just know that this woman is just intelligent. But she can also kick ass whilst she is pregnant. <laughs> she just shines. She's just, I just think she's a wonderful woman. I have the biggest woman crush on Rebecca Ferguson. I also love the fact that her character always makes time to take off her shoes before she kicks into action. It's like that is a woman who is being practical and she has a purpose. <laughs> Hashtag bring back Ilsa for Mission Impossible 7. I said this in my first thoughts video and I'm gonna say it again, watch it in the IMAX, it's the best way to watch it because those stunts are just they're the only way you should watch them because believe me, I was hanging on for dear life. I was holding onto the seat in front, I was putting my foot out, I was just like, this is too much for me to handle. Uh, it was amazing and the, especially the halo jump, that will get you going, Whoa. <laughs> you generally feel like you are there. It brings you right into the experience. So watching IMAX, they're not a fan that they've brought 3D to this franchise because it doesn't need it. It does not need that gimmick. It's just amazing to watch these stunts. You don't need the whole 3D aspect, but sacrifice you have to make to see it in the IMAX. So something else that I said, and this is how I'm gonna finish off this review because I just found this film exceptional, absolutely exceptional. It was just, mind blown. So my ramblings at 3.30 in the morning after watching the midnight show of Mission Impossible Fallout in the IMAX, I wanted to finish off by saying, if they were to change the definition of action in the dictionary, it would have the words Mission Impossible Fallout next to it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe for more like it and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Like the video and please leave a comment in the box below with your thoughts and feelings on Mission Impossible Fallout.